In this video, I will review the variable browser. The variable browser is used within many parts of the software when we need to select one or more variables. In this example, I'm going to go to System Setup, Edit View Variables, and to bring up the variable browser, click Browse. Here, it lists the locations on the left and the variables on the right. This top location will show all the variables within the whole facility, and as we select different locations, we will see the different variables assigned to each of those locations. If I select a location that has sublocations, I can expand it by clicking the plus sign. And then I can see that here under filters, it had four sublocations, filter one, two, three, and four. And as I highlight filter one, I see all of filter one variables. If I would like to see all the filter variables in one list, I can right click on the parent location and choose show vars in the location and their children. Here I can use other tools such as the quick filter if I want to filter out and just see the flow variables. And so that quick filter will filter uh, based off the variable name, location, tag, and units. And so another way I could have done this is by filtering by MGD and we can see it looked within the units and saw that these variables had MGD in them. So that can be useful when you need to filter out and just select a subset of the variables within a location. We can also resize and customize this variable browser to best fit our needs. If I wanted to make it larger, I can go to one of the sides and drag it out. And here for the locations window, I can make it smaller or larger here as well based on our needs. We can also change the order of the fields listed here. So if I wanted to bring the type of variable here before the SCADA tag, I could drag it over, and maybe the units as well. The default sort order here is by the variable number. But if I wanted to change that so it's sorted by units, I could click up here on the heading for units, and it's now sorted by units in alphabetical order. We can also change which fields are shown within the variable browser by clicking Setup. Here on the left we can see which fields are visible currently. And perhaps we do not want to see whether it allows a symbol or what the location ID is. We can deselect that. And when we're done with that, we'll click Done. And it will no longer show those in the list of fields here. And we can hit the Save button now. And for now on, when we open up the variable browser, it will look just like this so that you don't have to keep making this change every time you bring up the variable browser. Now, when we want to select a variable, we can highlight it and click OK or double click it. In this case, it takes me to that variable where I could then do things such as make changes to how many decimal places it has or the name. I'll bring up the variable browser again. Other options you have here are to right click. And you can do things like show the thousand most recent values for a variable. Or right click and trend the thousand most recent so that you have a nice graph. And from there, do things like zoom in and look at a smaller time frame if needed. Also, there'll be times when you can select more than one variable when you're doing something such as building a graph. So we'll walk through that example. Here, I'm going to build a time series graph, and I want to add multiple variables. So I'll click Add. And in this case, I'm going to want to graph all my filter turbidities. So here, I will show all the variables within the filters and do the quick filter and type in turbidity there and choose which ones I want. And to choose multiple, I'll hold control and select which ones I would like. And then I'll click OK. And we can see here that it brought in the multiple variables. And that is how you can use the variable browser.